Speaking of the NFL trade deadline, it is now less than a week away. The Falcons expected to be one of the busier teams. Raheem Moore has actually commented on it today. He didn't say too much more that Terry Fontenot is working on the phones, but he did mention the fact that there are a lot of sellers. And when you look around the league, there are a lot of bad teams, two and five, two and six teams that have just looked pathetic teams that you thought might look good, thought might contending. There's a lot, there's a big gap. There's a lot of teams that are five and three, six and two, stuff like that. And then there's a ton of two and six, two and five, three and five teams that could be willing to offload some players. He mentioned the fact that there are a lot of sellers. So there are a lot of players available. We've already talked about the fact that there will be a lot of buyers when it comes to pass rushers. Yeah. So it's good that there is a lot of sellers. But the one thing I think we can all agree on as Falcons fans is they can not come up empty handed. And I know that they're probably not going to get a top guy, but coming up empty handed in my mind is just about as unacceptable as it gets. Yeah, it's it's malfeasance. I mean, from Terry Fontenot's perspective, uh, you've poured resources into the pass rush. This is not the moment to stop pouring. You know, this is the moment, if anything, to continue. Now, that doesn't mean go and be an idiot and start overpaying for veterans. You know, uh, Zadarius Smith is a very popular name, uh, but he's 32 years old. Uh, you know, how much is he really going to provide? He's certainly going to provide more than what the Falcons have currently gotten. But also, this isn't the moment to just start, you know, uh, like you said, there, there, I did a, I did a count on it. There could be a quarter of the NFL in in the market for a pass rusher. So yes, there are a lot of sellers, but there's going to be a lot of buyers specifically for pass rushers. And I say it all the time. I compare it to uh, MLB pitchers all the time, starters in particular. That you can never have too many pitchers in baseball. You can never have too many pass rushers. And generally speaking, everybody in both leagues is looking for them. So it's not going to be easy, and you can't get into a bidding war for a guy that you know is going to be a short-term fix. The hope was Matthew Judon was going to be a fix and hopefully a long-term fixture in Atlanta. You know, it's starting to look like that's not the case, but that doesn't mean a guy like Montez Sweat, uh, you know, isn't available. That the Falcons lost out to the Bears last year, where he is going to be a long-term piece. But like a guy like Zadarius Smith, he's a short-term rental. He's a guy that you don't need to spend an arm and a leg on to get because this Falcons pass rush is so bad. One guy, especially a 32-year rotational edge, is not going to fix. This is a multi-year fix. This is going to have to have resources poured into it. We're going to have to have internal development still. You know, this is a, you know, what we did at the quarterback position this past offseason, that's what we're going to have to do this season only just to get it to a manageable uh, you know, place. I think, without getting into the specifics, there should be one goal, and you know, this is what why fans should temper expectations. The goal shouldn't be to make it an average pass rush. You know, obviously that would be great, but I think that's even, you know, wishful thinking. The goal should be let's just not make it the reason why we lose games anymore. Like at least let's get it to a point where we're looking at it and it's like, well, it's not costing us games. Maybe it's not winning us games, but it's not costing us games anymore. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like there's a Montez Sweat out there this no. year. I know a lot of we've talked about the Max Crosby, the Miles Garrett's. Now they would to, fix it. Yeah, and tried to tell people <laughs> that's not going to happen because there's no signs, no inclinations. And maybe a, a bigger name that's not quite on their level, on the Montez Sweat level, does become available over the next week. Things can change a lot. A yeah. team goes and gets blown out and is now three and six, and maybe they lose their quarterback. Who the hell knows, right? Yeah. Like a lot of things can change. Just this week alone, leading into the NFL trade line, where, where a popular name that we haven't talked about becomes available. But I agree. You know, I think, you know, Zadaria Smith isn't going to make it. But to me, I think you just got to really think about this in a, in a, in a, as a numbers game almost. Like, give me multiple bodies. Like, and you see, you saw what Ush went for a sixth round pick. Like, what is that? That's absolutely nothing. Like, that, especially that, to this team. That, yeah. We're not doing anything with sixth round. We're not, we're doing, not anything. doing anything we're with anything else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we're not, we are doing absolutely nothing with anything outside the first round. So, yeah. like, if we're talking about sixth or seventh round picks for guys that can clearly come in and be upgrades over the, even the back backups that we have but Oosh would be a starter for this team like th th what are we doing here like and you can get multiple of those guys I mean I, I'm think I'm thinking get a starter get get some backups I don't like get yeah, get, get get as get edge many. guys get interior guys a name that I saw pop up that I hadn't thought about but it's very intriguing is Calais Campbell old friend Calais Campbell yeah he's 37 years old but that guy can still play football and, and two things 
he can he he's a he's the kind of guy that you can move up and down the line of scrimmage. He's the kind of guy that not only is going to give you some juice, six and a half sacks last year for the Falcons co-leader. He's also good against the run, which is something that the yeah. Falcons, yeah, it's not the sexy acquisition in terms of like we need pass rush, we need sacks, but like the run defense has been absolutely horrible. And if you can kill two birds with one stone, I mean, that's the perfect kind of trade deadline acquisition in my yeah. eyes. I mean, and listen, get, getting a better run de defense is only going to improve the pass rush. So th there's there's definitely things, other things to consider than just getting the pass rush. And I, I think there's several names out there, several, several names. None of them are going to be super sexy that you can bring in and that will make this team significantly better. And then the hope is th those guys can come in, be competent, at least against one area of the game, and elevate others, elevate Grady Jarrett. Because listen, Listen, the internal guys have to be better, which is something yeah. that we've talked about. Grady Jarrett, David Onyemata have not performed like this Aaron donald s duo that we thought was going to be in the middle of the Falcons' defensive line. Matthew Dudon, we've talked about his struggles all year. He's been one of the most ineffective pass rushers in all of football. The hope is that those guys can be better and maybe bringing in just some competent pieces to surround them with will elevate the entire group to, like you said, le league average, probably not going to happen. But just don't make it the worst in football. Get me a sack. Yeah, see, that is like the expectations need to be tempered that you can't turn around a unit this bad in, in one trade deadline with one or even two, even three guys, like in terms of what's going to be available. It's not going to turn around this uh, pass rush. But some of the guys, we mentioned Sidari Smith. We mentioned Calais Campbell. Those are two older guys. Will McDonald, probably not going to be available. He's a Jets pass rusher. Uh, the Jets have obviously invested heavily in that position. He's a really damn good player, but they're also two and six. Um, and, and, you know, it doesn't seem like that organization is really turning it around. They're also not the smartest organization. They just traded for Devontae Adams and that bloated contract. So maybe they will. Who knows? Harold Landry. Tennessee Titans, they're at the bottom of the barrel as well. Uh, you never know what they're going to do. They're having a not a fire sale, so to speak, but they're certainly selling off parts. Um, and, and if you can convince, convince, you know, uh, uh, you know, this is not going to happen, but, you know, you would be a fool, Terry Fontenot, if you didn't at least pick up the phone and call Carolina, call New Orleans, Chase Young. They're not probably not going to trade you within the division, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to at least ask. And so those are the kind of guys, those caliber of guys uh, that the Falcons are really looking at, you know, in terms of fans. That's who you should be looking at. Not the Miles Garretts, not the Max Crosbys. You know, that, that's all good and well, but those guys aren't going to be available uh, at this trade deadline. So we're looking at rotational guys at best. Yeah, and I, listen, when you talk about what could this group, I mean, sacks are drive enders, right? Like, and frankly, the Falcons are getting maybe, maybe if they're lucky, one drive ender a week, which is just absolutely <laughs> pathetic, right? Let's try to get that to one or two a week, right? If we can just do that, I mean, that's a whole possession. That is that's an point. entire possession the where goal? you're giving Kirk Cousins another possession that he didn't have. And right now you're winning games despite not having In spite having that, of in having spite a of that. terrible, we, Baker Mayfield dropped back like, 48 or 50 times and didn't get hit once and we didn't get a we didn't get a finger on baker mayfield like let's take some let's walk let's crawl we're we're just trying to crawl and before we can walk and then eventually run yeah it was listen listen the falcons have had success i mean there's teams across the league that have had success with no uh pass rush when their offense is elite it looks like the falcons are trending towards being elite on the offensive side of the ball they do have some pieces to get turnovers in the secondary which is very very vital mm -hmm. to winning big games if they can just get a few game changing plays at key moments throughout the season you really never know and, and that's really what you're hoping for you're not you're hoping to hit the lottery everything has to work out in your favor but it's not impossible. We no. see it every year in this league. That's what we got to hope for the Falcons at this year's trade deadline.